Any team with playoff designs knows you have to win within your division and also win at home. And last night, the Sox did both, coming from behind in dramatic fashion to knock off the Indians in the bottom of the ninth. And tonight, Hector Nuesi gets his second start of the season. And the Sox look to keep the home cooking hot on a cold Chicago night. Next, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. We are coming to you from the city beautiful Chicago, Illinois, where tonight Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox baseball. It's Jose Abreu, Avi Garcia, Alexi Ramirez and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Jason Kipnis, Michael Brantley, Carlos Santana, and the Cleveland Indians. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrell. Since we get set to bring you game two of this three-game set and game two of this five-game home, let's check this seven-game homestand. It'll be three with these guys and finish it off with four against Kansas City. But in the game last night, for the first time since April of 2005, the Sox, in the bottom of the ninth inning, overcame a three-run deficit, and they won that ball game four to three. It was so exciting, and when you do nothing for the better part of eight and a half innings, you figure, well, the game might be over. But Abasio Garcia starts it off with an innocent double down the line. This one over the head of Michael Bielis, who's an infielder by trade playing center field, came back to haunt the Indians. And the Sox continue to pour it on. Gordon Beckham, who came in defensively, gets a base hit, as does Adam Eaton. And then it's up to Melky Cabrera. And Melky with the bases loaded, the winning run at third base. It's one to left center field, and the comeback is complete. The Sox win in dramatic fashion. It's one of those games that you read about for other teams. You don't see it very often with the Sox, but last night was very exciting. Well, Hector Nuesi making his second start, but his opponent tonight is a very lucky young man. Last time we saw Carlos Carrasco, he was down on the ground, wreathing in the dirt, and he got a line drive right off his face. It was a week ago, and Melky Cabrera up. Carlos went down, and for a while, he lost consciousness. But fortunately, no fractures, no breaks at all, no concussion, and here he is one week later getting a start. Now, he's 2-5 and five lifetime against our Sox, his ERA up over 5. You don't know about the psychological aspect of an injury like that. We'll see today. If he's not getting the ball over the plate, then it's still bothering him, and the Sox can win the first two of this series. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
A Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. Audi, truth in engineering. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to beautiful U.S. Cellular Field on a very chilly night. It's 46 degrees at game time, and let's take a look at how Terry Francona is going to line up his Indians. Michael Bourne to lead it off, and he hasn't done much this year with Jason Kipnis in the two spot. Then it's Michael Bradley just back in the starting lineup. Carlos Santana in the four spot with Brandon Moss, David Murphy, Lonnie Chisenhall, Roberto Perez, and Jose Ramirez at shortstop hitting ninth. The Sox defense, and now they'll line up behind Hector Nuese, left to right, Melky Cabrera, Adam Eaton, and Abisail Garcia. With Connor Gillespie, Alexi Ramirez, Micah Johnson, and Jose Abreu in the infield. Tyler Flowers gets a nod behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Hector Nuese, who had a start skipped. So we'll see how his control is today. He's 0 1 as ERA, pretty respectable at 386. He didn't make it through the fifth inning as one start this year, and we'll see how things go tonight. The umpires for the ball game tonight, Eric Cooper, who's got a pretty Good strike zone as far as a pitcher is concerned behind the plate. He's the crew chief with Dan Bellino at first, Lance Barksdale at second, and Quinn Wolcott is at third. So the Sox come into this one at five and seven. The Indians four and eight. And they've thrown a ball around the infield, which means that we're ready for baseball, and I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner. Ken Harrelson. All right, Steve, thank you. And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. So happy you could join us for game two of this three game series. And Michael Bourne, 32 year old center fielder, first pitch of the ball game is taken for a strike. And you just hit it right on the head as far as Eric Cooper goes. Hitters, if they don't know he's a pitcher's on par by now, shame on him. He's got a, a consistent zone. It is a wide zone. You got to go up swinging the bat. One and one to count. Indians come in hitting at 218 as a team with a 4.06 ERA. One and two. Born at 357 last year in 106 games. Gone are the days when he was going to steal 40 bases, but they still need him to get on at the top. I pop up. Alexi. One thing you have to worry about with Jason Kipnis, he tried it last night, but the pitch actually followed him as he went up the line. He will bunt on occasion. And with that in mind, Connor Gillespie, well off the line at third, but even with the bag. However, on the right side, both Abreu and Johnson back. First pitch strike. And the count one and one and here it's ballpark 330 down the left field line 335 down the right field line 375 and the gap sent 400 straight away center. Got him on the fist with that one. His right handers skip this is hitting 348. This Indian team is a much better team against a right handed starter. They're just one in five when a lefty takes them on because they're a stronger left hand hitting lineup than they are right hand hitting lineup. Just did get a piece of it. If you missed that game last evening, it was something. First time since April 6th, 2005. And it was against Cleveland. That we overcame a ninth inning deficit of three or more runs to win. And that's out of play at left side. Absolutely amazing comeback because it started with 
One out, nobody on. Start against Cody Allen, who's three for three in save situations, although he's been having some curveball problems. And he actually said after the game that his curveball is a little too big and loopy. He wants to tighten it up. He also said he was making a lot of mistakes with the fastball all up in the zone. Right side, Micah. With the bases loaded, a high fastball in a situation where you have to get a ground ball, and Melky Cabrera ends it all. What a comeback. Michael Brantley went for four last night with an RBI. Michael comes in at 208, no homers. He's driven in three. Just off the plate. Michael had some back issues in spring training that set him back for a while and then was out of four ball games for the Indians, so he's getting a late start. And they certainly have to have him clicking on all four cylinders. That ball hit deep in the right field, but we got a man there. Harvey right, makes the catch. A one, two, three inning after a half inning of play. It's the Indians nothing and the good guys. Good guys coming to bat. Up and Melky Cabrera in the two spot. Jose Abreu, Adam LaRoche, Abaseo Garcia, Connor Gillespie, Alexi Ramirez, Tyler Flowers, and Micah Johnson playing second and hitting nine. The defense and how they'll line up behind Carlos Carrasco. It's Bradley Bourne and Moss in the outfield with Chisholm, Ramirez, Kipnis, and Santana in the infield. Roberto Perez behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Carlos Carrasco. In two starts, one lasting just two hitters. He's one and one, his ERA 284. Lifetime against our Sox, he's had a hard time. His ERA up over five, he's two and five lifetime. And we'll see if there are some psychological effects from that line drive he took off his face. See if he can get the ball over the plate early in this one. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours as first pitch strike to Adam Eaton. Comes in hitting at 149. But he's been walking a little bit. In fact, he's going on a leadoff walk the last two ball games. Usually it starts for hitters. They start drawing walks and then they start to hit. Adam is not hitting very well, but he is starting to see the ball better. You can't take bases on balls unless you're seeing it well. And he's a good hitter. He's just not hitting, and he looks back at Perez giving him some time to collect himself as he took one right off the mask. Out 
Hatfield swung around to the left. Chisenhall well off the line at third as that pitch is well outside. Carrasco had some problems as a starter. They moved him to the bullpen. He simplified his motion, now making every one of his pitches from the stretch. And that allowed him to get the ball over the plate. Chops that one foul. He is the last remnant on this Indian team from the deal that sent Cliff Lee to the Philadelphia Phillies. And they signed Carrasco to a twenty two million dollar long term deal. It gives him some security. Counting last year in his last 12 starts his ERA below one five. So Mickey Calloway has worked wonders with him. And the Indians have themselves a top of the rotation starter when he's right. Foul tipped, hung on two, and that's one out. So the one out, let's check out our picks to click. Jim Angio, our director and the crew. Adam. Steve's going with Cabrera. And Tom. Phyllis Leonakis, along with Deb. We're going to go with. Micah Johnson. I think the crew is adding some of those wins on the off days. I believe they've got four already. Oh, yeah. So here's Cabrera. Hitting a 260. Six for 11 lifetime with a home run against Carrasco. To the count. That's what it's like, and it is very windy. The wind at 21 miles an hour, but gusts over 30 miles an hour at the ballpark. Very much a factor. Two down, two strikeouts. Good hard slider low and in. Carrasco has both a slider and a curveball to go with a straight change. He's a four pitch pitcher. But now that he's able to get everything around the strike zone, he's finally fulfilling the promise that he had when he was one of the top prospects in the Philadelphia organization. There's a strike to Abreu. Comes in hitting at 255. Three homers. He's driven in seven. And he is two for ten lifetime off Carrasco. Despite the fact that Cleveland is playing 333 baseball, they've averaged over 10 strikeouts per nine innings. So the pitching staff has done a pretty decent job. As a team, they're just not hitting. But David Robertson averaging 18 strikeouts it's, per nine innings. He's, he's been somewhat. Magnificent. One and two. In fact, last night when Chisenhall led off the ninth, making contact, that was something special because he's fanned eight of the last nine men he's faced.
They go by. They look up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Solo shot for Jose Abreu and the Sox lead it. one nothing. Home run number four. It ties him for the team lead and runs batted in with Adam LaRoche and Alexei Ramirez. They all have eight. Our forward home run replay, and that is a hanging slider or curveball. You can tell by the way Perez wanted it away, and it just spun on the inside part of the plate. He lost the grip on that, and it cost him. Calvin Herrera. <laughs> 13th first inning home run for Jose. As Roche takes a strike, they even accounted one. Yeah, Kelvin Herrera lost the grip on it, except amazingly enough, it went behind Brett Lowry. At 100 miles an hour. Yeah. I wonder if he'd have kept the grip. How fast it would have been. That was a particularly nasty series after that slide at second base that took Elsadis Escobar out for a few days. Fortunately, Escobar is back. He's a great young talent, and he means the world to Kansas City. Joy two. And he strikes out the side, but not before Abreu with his fourth homer after one. It is one nothing White Sox. seen in its entirety on Comcast Sportsnet Plus and please go to csnchicago.com for the CSN Plus channel number in your area and switch over now to watch the rest of tonight's White Sox game and talking about csnchicago.com Dan Hayes and Dan what you got for us tonight well we've seen Hawk a little bit of Adam Eaton showing some signs that he's emerging from this slump to start the season but he's made it pretty clear that he's wearing it you know he's having a tough time dealing with this season opening slump uh, you know the basically he likes being that guy that kind of comes in and as he said uh, the straw that stirs the drink and you know he feels like a lot of the expectations that the team has had the big expectations that he's sort of letting people down he, he feels Melky Cabrera's numbers are attached to his 
Jose Abreu, Adam LaRoche, and, and really wants to get going and admits he's probably pressing a little bit and trying to do too much. Well, that's one of the biggest killers in, in life, especially in sports, is expectations. And you have to learn how to deal with them. I mean, you're not going to ever be anything as far as realizing your potential and you, you can handle expectations. And, and he did say that he started to realize it. And we've seen it the other day a couple times on the bases. It's, it's shown itself in that way. Robin Ventura talked about that yesterday saying he thinks he's trying to do too much. And, but Adam knows he needs to slow things down. He liked some of the things they did yesterday. Obviously the two walks, but also that ninth inning at bat. And, and Robin Ventura said that was a, a huge lift for him just because it could have gone one way or the other. And, you know, he fell behind Cody Allen 0-2 and knew that the curveball was coming, sat waited for those two curveballs to go by, even the count, and then took the fastball left field for the base hit. Well, nobody likes to start off a season five and seven. And again, the expectations are make that even more dire, so to speak. But everybody knows this is a good ball club. And for people to, I think, start jumping to conclusions right now is a big mistake, especially our players. And you look at the offense and what, what they've done, and I think it's six games and two runs or fewer. That ball hit deep, and this game is tied at one. Santana's third homer. But yeah, the offense obviously not getting on base. I think they're two point or two ninety nine on base percent right now. They think they'll be a little bit better, and that twelve games is, is tough to just look at that and think that's what it's going to carry out for the season. Well, a couple days ago, we had the best batting average in baseball as far as runners in scoring position. The only problem was we didn't have many guys in scoring position, so that negated that. And Adam Eaton below 200. Melky Cabrera sitting around 260. Those are guys at 360 and 340 on base percentages. Well, Dan Hayes, thank you very much, buddy. And I'm sure that they're going to get this thing cranked up. Dan Hayes from ZSNChicago.com. Brandon Moss. One and one to count. It's our four to home run replay, and you'll notice that Santana is able to get on top of a high fastball. Most unusual. Most left handers, like Brandon Moss, have uppercut swings, and they're not going to get. To the high fastball. And Santana was able to do it. He's a switch hitter with power from both sides of the plate. And he tied it up. And usually that's a spot where you figure you can throw it by him. Well, you, Brandon Moss, you can. That series we saw in Cleveland, I mean, he didn't hit anything. He couldn't hit anything from the belt up. He go. One down. Good straight change after setting him up with high fastballs. That one had late movement. Perfect spot. And Moss goes down on strikes. First strike out of the night for Hector. And here's the veteran. David Murphy. 33 years old. Two for 11 lifetime with a homer against Nwesi. Nobody could get Murphy from Texas after 2012. He hit 304 that year. It was a big year for him. 61 driven in. That ball hit deep into right center field. But Adam Eaton is there. And Murphy, part of a platoon system that Terry Francona hopes is effective. Right now, this team playing 500 ball against the right handed starters. But we talked about the fact that they're just one in five against lefties. They've had their problems when a southpaw takes the hill. And the Sox have a lot of those. <laughs> I 
Johnny Chisenhall fouls it back. He was 0 for 4 last evening. Comes in at 216. Indians drafted Chisholm Hall number one, 29th player chosen overall in 2008. High school, he was a pitcher. Threw upwards of 95 miles an hour, so he's a pretty good athlete. Also played a little shortstop, but became a full time hitter. Bites that one off. One in, two out. And the one two pitch. Baker's throwing a lot harder tonight than we've seen. Probably because he did miss a start. He was pushed back, so his arm is fresh. Said that fastball up to 96 miles an hour. That's high end two center field. That should be a can of corn. But the good top hand of Carlos Santana rockets one out of here and we're tied at one. to one series lead over the Nashville Predators starting at eight on Comcast Sports Net. Two solo homers one by a brave you. One by Santana. And here for us in the second it'll be Garcia Gillespie and Ramirez. Be hitting a 308 to Homer. He's driven in three. Started off that comeback last evening with a one out double right over the bag at first. What I like about the way he started is he's using the whole field. Foul line to foul line. Taking the ball back up the middle when he's had the opportunity. Ty Stevenson's got him in a good frame of mind. He's not over swinging. He's not trying to hit the ball out of the park because he's strong enough where if he gets a good piece of it, it's going out anyway. And it sounds like that's something that should be done with every hitter. 
The only problem is that as he gets in there. Tough pitch. The only problem is is it. The way a lot of guys are they just won't allow themselves to be in a good frame of mind. They will as long as everything's going good, but when things start to go a little shaky, which they're going to in this game, they panic mentally. Well, I think a lot of strong guys think about hitting the ball out of the park in most every situation instead of going with the count and taking what the pitcher is going to give them. That's in two. Left field for out number two. Well, we talk so much about the count because it's actually between the pitcher and the hitter the most important thing going and if you learn to hit with the count with some guys it takes them a while to learn and some guys learn it very quickly like a, a big hurt Frank Thomas when he first came in other guys never learn it they never they have the same swing on 02 as they do on 2-0 well if you're a young hitter you can understand it. if you become a few years in the league and you still have that philosophy you're not going to hit. Alexei jumps all over first ball fastball. And he's going to give it a go. Here's the throw safe. Picks up his fourth to the two bagger. Sox know that they're going to run on Michael Bourne every chance they get especially when he drifts into right center field. So Alexei never hesitated. He got a high fastball. Drove it into right field, even though Bourne got to it quickly. Lexi's thinking two bases. And you got to hustle out of the box to wind up at second base here. And again, this is pre series meeting. They tell you be careful with Brantley, he's very accurate in left field, but run on Bourne every chance you get. Here's Tyler. Tyler hitting in 333 with a homer. He's driven in four. Had a big base hit in that ninth inning last evening. Got the right size, but the wrong shape. That's one of the few times that Carrasco has missed with the changeup. That time he got it up and in. Tyler just unloaded. Reminiscent of one he hit in Cleveland. He hit it a mile, but hit it foul. And that brings Perez out from behind the plate. Wants to talk to him about that straight change. And the philosophy of if you miss, miss down. See the second pitch in our Menards pitch tracks. That was the high changeup. For the most part, he's been very effective with that changeup here in the early going. That one he hit in Minnesota be over that pitch count 29 sound out there in the upper deck. That was a blast. The Minnesota one was a lot longer than the one he in Cleveland. Got that one by him at 95. I'm just extremely happy to see that young man right there out on the mound did not miss a turn, which is almost unbelievable. If you'd have been there and saw it as we did. We did say that he lost consciousness for a bit. And one week later, he's back starting a major league it's game. Amazing. It is. It truly is. It's just it's remarkable. One of those. You believe in miracles, that was a mini miracle. Lexi at second, two out. Fouls up and back. Trying to run that fastball right by him. He tried to get it up and in. It had a little more of the plate than he would have liked. That's why Tyler was able to stay alive. Al feel straight up. Not equidistant.
And CSN again will be leaving this game at 8 o'clock for Chicago Blackhawks playoff coverage. Tonight's Sox game can be seen in its entirety on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. So please go to CSNChicago.com or the CSN Plus channel number in your area and switch over now to watch the rest of tonight's White Sox game. Tied at one. Game brought to you by Miller Light. Roberto Perez will lead it off. To be followed by Jose Ramirez and back to the top of the order with Michael Bourne. Perez, 26 year old receiver, going to get a lot of playing time because of the injury to Jan Gomes. That's a huge loss to the Indians, their silver slugger catcher. Perez takes strike one. He's got a couple of homers. He's driven in four. Perez was always good defensively. That wasn't the problem. The problem was swinging the bat. The Ty Van Berkley, the hitting coach, worked with him. Tried to shorten up his leg kick. Coordinate it. With his hands so that he wasn't out in front of everything, and since then he has power and he's shown it this year. Well, a lot of times coaches try to get a guy to shorten up their swing. And they do it with Trying to think mechanics, something mechanical. Whatever. Yeah. With the legs, the feet, arms. When the best way to get a guy to shorten up his swing is just go up there for a while <laughs> and take a two strike approach. When you step in that batter's box, face that pitcher for the first time, you're, you're thinking you've got two strikes. Makes you look at the ball a little bit longer. And just try to make contact. That's it. And usually good things happen if you make contact. Other guys will go in there sometimes with a one strike approach. They're hitting 0 1. 
And then when you're going good and everything and the stars are in line and metabolism. <laughs> yeah. Biorhythms. Everything is good shape. Yeah. You go up there and you just hit. That's when hitting is easy. Be gone. Two strikeouts now. Both strikeouts have come off the straight change. As you can see, he's got Perez well out in front of it. So here's the good looking young 22 year old switch hitting shortstop. Two and over the count. Big gap out there in left center. Gillespie off the line, even with the bag at third. Three and one. You want to walk him? He's three for three in stolen bases. The Indians are six for seven in that category. Pops him up left side. Join us at U.S. Cellular Field for an exciting White Sox baseball season. Pick seven plan offers the fans a flexible seven game plan that features savings off individual game tickets. Pick seven plans start as low as fifty five dollars per plan. For tickets or more information visit whitesox.com or call three one two six seven four one thousand. Michael Bourne popped up to Alexei. Two year old veteran. And the one one pitch. Mark Burley in Toronto leading Baltimore 10 2 the game in the bottom of the fifth up in Canada. And this is going to be a nice one two three inning. This is six in a row retired by Hector after that home run by Santana. Chicago Blackhawks playoff coverage in tonight's Sox game can be seen in its entirety on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. Plus, go to CSNChicago.com for the CSN Plus channel number in your area and switch over now to watch the rest of tonight's White Sox game.
Tied at one here in the bottom of the third. Micah Johnson will lead it off as the corners come in close. Outfield swings around to the left. Takes the bunt, takes the ball. It's a good situation for Micah because now it's gotten around the league that he not only is going to push the ball to third base, but drag the ball to first. Meaning in this case, Chisholm Hall and Santana both in very close at the corners. And he drills that one in the hole. That's exactly what happens when you do bring him in close. There's absolutely no angle for the corner men to make anything happen. So now one of the speed burners on this team aboard to lead off the inning. Like doing a better job recently of doing what they'd like him to do, which is hit the ball on the ground and take advantage of his speed. When he hits it in the air, especially the left and left center field, he's not doing himself any favors. And you know, that's just learning what to do in the major league. Well, that's just where Todd Stevenson's trying to do. Yep. He's trying to change his mindset. And everybody's going to be safe. I love that. It's a great bunt. <laughs> I love the bunt. And Adam's been working on that. I mean, that has to be part of his arsenal. And he's in the same situation as Micah Johnson. If you can lay a bunt down, and the great bunter Brett Butler, who's from Libertyville just up the road, used to say that if you get five bunt hits a month, it's another 30 points on your batting average. So a 270 hitter, if he can bunt, becomes 300, which is exactly what Adam did last year. Cabrera struck out on a tough pitch. Quick slider down and in. And that's out of play. And this is what you want to see from Mike Johnson in the nine hole and Adam Eaton in the one hole. Well, Micah Johnson just turned around and did something that you've been talking about all year. He turned around and looked at every one of the outfielders to find out where they are. Pretty good habit to get into. Well, you got to do it. It's just that simple. I mean, that's how simple it is. It's just that simple. Just turn around and take just a look. Just turn around and glance. You don't have to stare them down. Just glance and get an idea of where they are. So when that ball's hit, all of a sudden it computes in your mind and you're off and running or you're holding. That off speed pitch lay off in the count one and two. Boy, he had a good at bat last night. That 2 2 curveball he laid off was just a magnificent professional hitter take. Actually, the best curveball that Cody Allen threw, and it was down and out of the zone. Very few guys could have laid off. He did. And then got the base hit. So, rack him up. Two down. Perez out there to talk with Carrasco about being very careful with the big man. Brayu hit a home run in the first inning. And you've got a couple of bases to work with. Even with Adam LaRoche on. I think Perez is telling him. You got to be a little careful with this guy because. He is the most devastating hitter in this lineup. Brayu has accounted for hours with his fourth homer. And if you missed it, poof. Hanging breaking ball on the inside part of the plate and gone. Breaking ball strike, go one. That's out of play. That's the fastball at 96. And once again, we'll be leaving this game at 8 o'clock. Blackhawks playoff coverage in tonight's Sox game can be seen in its entirety on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. So please go to CSN Chicago.com for the CSN Plus channel number in your area and switch over to watch the rest of tonight's Sox game. Well, the 
gets away. Throw it away. Nice play by Perez. Nice catch by Santana. And that'll retire the side. So we get the first two men aboard, but that's a good sign. And we're still tied at one. No for us. It'll be Kipnis, Brantley, and Santana. One and one to count. Another good straight chain to that one down in the zone. Kip is able to foul it off. Yes, he did. He gone. Just barely got a piece of the bat. Fortunately, sticks in the glove. Here's Michael Brantley, one out. Javi in right field. Outfield straight up and spread out. First pitch strike. Looked like Brantley was right on that pitch in the first inning, so. Hector's got to be very careful with him. He's starting to feel better, and he's a huge presence in that lineup when he's feeling good. 97 runs driven in last year. Hit 327, 20 home runs. That doubled his career best coming into last season, so a breakout year for Bradley. And the Indians will go nowhere unless he has a similar type season. That's it hard, but just a strike. Man, the count nothing in two. Teller gave him a very high target. He wanted that fastball face high. It was a little too high to be inviting.
Foul tip. Tyler Flowers is convinced that Hector can throw the fastball by him upstairs. And he's been trying to do just that since it was 0 and 2, and he's fouled off a couple of them. There you see 3, 4, and 5 have all been upstairs after jumping ahead 0 and 2. Front on the all speed, and Jose, like he should, will take it himself too out. Join the White Sox for our first taste testing of brand new food at the ballpark this Thursday, April 23rd. You receive a game ticket and a tasting ticket to try sample size portions of our food items, including bacon on a stick. That's new at the ballpark, and there's some other new. Tasty treats for you to try to purchase specially priced tickets. Visit whitesocks.com slash taste. Santana. Top handed a fastball out of here. For his third home of the year. Indians now with 10 home runs this year. Every one of them a solo. Homer. And everyone on the road this year. You can always use a pretzel at the ballpark. Connor has moved from third in the short right field. Give him a cookie. Three and oh. High strike is called. That was a real high strike. Take a look at where the four appears on the Honda pitch tracks. We told you about the generous zone of Eric Cooper to stay that way the entire game. Of course, three and zero. Oh, you're not going to swing at anything up there. Not a high strike. First walk at you by Hector. Brandon Moss. He struck out his first trip. Last year had a good year, but it was a miraculous year before the All-Star break. He had 21 home runs before the break and just four after the break. There goes the runner. Safe. Sometimes you take for granted that a former catcher is not going to run too often. Hector a little slow to the plate. And that allowed Santana to beat the play. Santana now two out of two in the stolen base department. Oh. 
That's fouled over our dugout. Two out. Santana at second on a 2 2 pitch. Forthcoming. He gone. Four strikeouts. And we're still tied at one. Three games to nothing over the box. Coverage starts at 6.30 right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be LaRoche, Garcia, and Gillespie to face Carlos Carrasco. In a 1-1 tie. Young fan all bundled up. There are some older fans bundled up. 45 degrees here at the park as we speak. Not getting any warmer anytime soon, I don't think. So here's Adam struck out his first trip. It'll be quite a matchup in the ball game in the series finale tomorrow. Their ace and Cy Young Award winner last year, Corey Kluber, goes to the mound against Jeff Samarja. Fresh off just an outstanding performance, head to head with David Price in Detroit, where he got an eight inning no decision. Chopper three hopper. White Sox invite fans to celebrate Hispanic heritage at the ballpark with Dia de Familia. First 20,000 fans to enter U.S. Cellular Field receive a Jose Abreu Rookie Blanket of the Year or Rookie of the Year Blanket, whichever you want. Presented by Bigger's Pizza. Learn more at WhiteSox.com slash Familia. We saw those blankets yesterday and they are beautiful. Ball line right at him. That's a hang wolfum for Avi. Hit it right on the money. Now I got the glass piece. One out to Michael Brantley in left field.
Had him out in front. Fouls it up with a 95 mile hour fastball. A lot of people were surprised that Carrasco signed that four year, $22 million extension to his contract, which took him out of a year of free agency. It's because he had a non invasive heart procedure in the offseason. And he was thinking about his family and the family security when he signed that deal. Now, there's a few people in the Players Association, maybe not real happy with what they consider below market contract. Well, that's none of their business. No, players have to take care of themselves and their family, and he had some issues that he felt he wanted to get security. He's going to be a terrific pitcher. Odds are overwhelming if he stays together that he's going to be able to sign a big contract after this one. In the meantime, now he doesn't have to worry about much. One, two, three inning for Carlos, and we're into the fifth, still tied at one. is today's T-Mobile game changer. Now he wouldn't have had an opportunity to hit all of these triples and he's got five which is as many as the Tigers, Oakland, San Diego and San Francisco as a team. If Alex Rios doesn't break his hand but given that opportunity the first player ever to hit five triples in his first seven major league games he's making the most of it. Here's Murphy. Fly deep to center field his first trip. 1-1-0 one, one and oh for them, 1-4-0 for, oh for us. Uh-oh. It is 2-1 Indians. First homer of the year. The 11th solo home run and the 11th hit on the road for the Tribe. Hector's made two mistakes and it's two solo shots our forward home run replay this ball right where a left hand hitter likes it low and in and out here's Chisholm Hall and it's going to stay foul
Top of the seventh in Detroit. Yankees leading the Tigers 4 0. Got that one by. And the count nothing in two. Good pitch, got it in on him. Soft comebacker. One out. Hector's made the most of that straight change. He had Chisenhall well out in front. He can only tap it right back to him. So the changeup has been good. Forced him to expand his zone, go out of the strike zone. He's made a couple of mistakes on fastballs, and he's down two to one. Catcher Roberto Perez, the strikeout victim, leading off the third inning. Oh, and to the count. Bottom of the fifth in Kansas City, Twinkies and the Royals are tied at one. In front of that change, gave that one away a little bit. It was up a little higher than he would have liked. But all in all, pretty good outing tonight for Hector, especially pitching on extended rest where he was skipped because of a couple of off days. You worry about control, but he's gotten the ball over the plate. He gone. Two down. There was another straight change and that had the entire plate. So he fooled Perez with that one. You see good side and downward spin on that. So he's getting some late movement. Jose Ramirez, the shortstop, he popped up to his counterpart, Alexei. Corners in close. Ramirez has been a very good fielder, always has, but he also realizes that their number one prospect, Francisco Lindor, is not all that far away. Well, he wants to show a few people that he can play. So far, he's done a nice job defensively, but. The bat has been lagging behind. Lexay is going to get him again. It's a solo shot by Murphy. We're halfway home, trailing two to one.
We trail it two to one here in our half of the fifth inning. They have two runs on two hits, two solo homers. We have one run on four hits. That was a solo homer by Abreu. And here's the Lex. They had a hustle double his first trip. Get a first ball fastball the first time up, and the adjustment by Carrasco was first pitch curveball. Lexi now with 198 doubles in his career. Outfield straight up, spread out about equal distance. Tizen Hall just a couple of steps behind the bag, playing him perfectly right at it. Sox fans, join us on Saturday, April 25th at 1:10 as your White Sox take on the Royals. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Jose Abreu 2014 Rookie of the Year blanket presented by Beggar's Pizza. For tickets, call 866-SOX-GAME or visit WhiteSox.com/promos. Here's Tyler. Struck out his first trip on a very, very difficult pitch. But it did have a little bitty piece, a little bitty piece of the strike zone. But Tyler's been having some good at bats. His approach has been better. Ball hit sharply down to Chisenhall, who was playing way back. And two down. Well, an injury that's going to affect the White Sox happened in Milwaukee. Milwaukee off to just a terrible start. They're 2 and 11. Jonathan Lucroy, their everyday catcher who hit 301 last year, broke his toe. By his description, he said he broke it in half. It just has to heal. And he's going to be lost four to six weeks. Sox go up there the 11th of May for a three game series as they take on Milwaukee at Miller Park. Yeah, there was some. I was listening to MLB radio yesterday. And they were talking about a lot of people thinking Lucroy, who was the most valuable player on that ball club. He's a, a terrific player. Last year fourth in the National League MVP voting. When you lose a player of that magnitude and you're struggling anyway. It causes some big problems. You get a catcher that can lead the major leagues with 53 doubles. It's pretty impressive. All right, a one, two, three inning. We have completed five when we trail it two to one.
Two runs on two hits, two solo homers. We have four hits, one run. That was a solo homer. Santana, Murphy for them, Abreu for us. So here's the top of the order. Michael Bourne tries to bunt it, just jabs at it, flips it right into our dugout. Really amazing that a lot of guys who run well, and Bourne does that even these days, technique is just not particularly good. He's shaking his head because he knows when you drop the head of the bat, you're going to pop the ball up. No other place for it to go. Make your plans to be with us tomorrow. Not the other three games set. Just tomorrow, Jake, against Corey Kluber. And of course, the shark cage will be open tomorrow. Well, you're very good at taking the bag, like he should. First baseman. Should take everything he can on those ground balls. Too many guys will make the play on the ground ball, wait for the pitcher to get over there when they got plenty of time. Terry Francona went out there to have a word with Eric Cooper. No idea what it's about. A routine ground out. Now ball's gotten away. And Avi makes a friend. So it's a one out situation. A routine ground ball. Terry wanted a word with Eric Cooper. And he got it. Back through the middle. He's now one for three. He's a lifetime 361 hitter. Here at USC Cellular Field, maybe one of the factors is that. He's from just up the road in Northbrook. So I'm sure every time he comes to Cleveland, he has a lot of friends and family that come to watch him. Here you see Sandy Alomar, the first base coach. He was living in here in Chicago now. Born in Northbrook and raised there and living here. Brantley is going out to right and grounded to first. Yeah, but you can get your ticket down that shark cage tomorrow. And Jeff's out on that bump against Corey Clover. Twenty bucks will get you a shark cage cap, strikeout card. Off the end of the bat, that's trouble. So that'll be a base hit. That one probably not a ball that. Connor should have thrown. Because Brantley's got very good speed. This ball squibbed off the end of the bat, and the only thing that can happen here is this ball goes down the line into right field. Jose did a nice job of coming off, making sure that the runners have to stay at first and second. So Hector in a jam here in the top of the sixth. Santana has homered and walked. Also picked up a stolen base. Takes it up and takes the strike. Carlos Rodon. Ready to make his major league debut, and there's Bobby Thigpen. Trying to calm him down, and you know that 
the adrenaline is flowing. Something you've been dreaming about since you were in Little League or even before then. What's really great is to have a bullpen coach who was a terrific major league reliever. Great closer in his day, but he knows exactly what Carlos is going through. And he's out there to try to give him a little perspective, but it's not going to stop his heart from pounding. Well, that's what a bullpen coach should be as a former reliever. I think he was 57 saves American League record for a long time. And get them ready mentally to come in. And when Tiggy was pitching. To have the bases loaded and one out and you got to face Eddie Murray and you got to face Kenny Singleton and those guys. Of course in my time zone you get those relievers come in having to face the bases loaded and you had Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle and Elson Howard coming up. The advantage for Mickey was that he could hit from either side, so it didn't really matter. But in the case of Rodon, if Hector doesn't get Santana to ground into a double play, odds are overwhelming he'll come in to face Moss, who's going to be taken down then, most likely for a pinch hitter. I don't care what side you're hitting from, you got to get him ready mentally to come in. That's high in the right field, deep into the corner, but Avi's got room. He will make the catch, get it back in. So Kipnis tags moves into third. Two down runners at the corners. Moss been able to play twice and struck out twice. It could very well be that Tyler's going out there on instructions from the dugout to kill little time. Well, Don's a lifetime starter. So they want to make sure that he's good and loose if in fact he is going to come into this one and Eric Cooper is looking over in the dugout. He sees Robin walking out. So. It would appear. That Carlos Rodon. Is going to come into this for the first time as a major leaguer. And as he runs in from the pen. We'll step out and be back after these what messages. What a thrill for that young man. Is former number one pick last year, Carlos Rodon. And there's no easing into this situation. He's got runners at the corners, two outs. And it looks like Terry Francona is going to stay with Brandon Moss. So you look at the numbers from Charlotte, that's in two starts, 13 strikeouts and 10 innings. Left handers. Did not get a hit. And that's who he'll be facing. 
with a very fast man at third base and Jason Kipnis. Now 22 year old Southpaw is 6'3", 235 pounds. He's a big man. North Carolina State. Outfield straight up spread out. Cleveland on top two to one. Fastball at 97. Brantley's at first with pretty good speed. And the count goes to 3 and 0. And that'll load them up. Now Murphy's being called back. And he'll be taken down for a pinch hitter. Probably Rayburn. And it does look like Ryan Rayburn. Two for three last night with a homer and a double. A legitimate Sox killer. He has 77 career RBIs against us, which is unbelievable. Now, Eric Cooper wants to break up the conversation with Tyler Flowers. He's trying to settle down his left hander who is. Forcing with adrenaline. Missing with four straight to Moss. Now he's got to face. A pretty dangerous hitter against our Sox. Two down Sox packed. With Clevelanders. And here comes Coop. Five straight bad ones and the youngster is listening to a veteran pitching coach trying to do what he can to get him to just relax if that's possible and throw the ball in the zone. If you get hit, you get hit. Chris Sale also made his major league debut out of the bullpen, so he certainly knows exactly what Rodon is going through. That's pretty good pitch, didn't get it. That one could, could have easily gone Rodon's way. Cooper normally with a wide plate. Not give him the benefit of the call. That one at 96. Well, if you're Rayburn, you're looking dead red and nothing else. Career against the Sox, 301. And the count three and one. When you're looking fastball at 96 and you take it off the facing of the upper deck, you're very happy that he got out a little too quickly.
Payoff pitch. That one almost took Jason Kipnis with it. He was coming down the line and fortunately able to duck under this. I mean, he is way off the line, even with the coach's box, Mike Sarbaugh, wisely well away from the box, and Kipnis is down. But he gets back up. That one in 97, so he's not aiming it. Right now, he's looking for that strike zone with something on it. And it's going to be a fastball. There's a broken bat flare in the left field for a base hit, and that's going to score a pair. So it's a 4 1 lead. And Ryan Rayburn is absolutely just swings an unbelievable magic wand against us. All he's got to do is hit the ball, and it's going to find a hole, find a base hit. That pitch was inside off the plate at 98 miles an hour. He was able to get his hands in, knowing it's going to be a fastball. The unfortunate part is that Carlos worked himself in a situation where you have too much adrenaline to throw the slider. And even at 98, he was able to just pretty much fist it out into left field. We're probably the only team in baseball that he can hit that same pitch and get a base hit. <laughs> no I mean, it's just unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen this. I mean, I've seen a lot of guys hit clubs that I've been with hard. I don't think I've ever seen a guy swing more of a magic wand than Rayburn does and has against us. Well, when you're looking at 79 runs batted in and you add up the three next closest teams, put them all together, and they don't come close to 79. Realize how remarkable a job it is. Well, I mean, he hits him off the end of the bat, breaks his bat, gets a base hit. Hits it solid, hits it out here for a home run. Hits it off the fist, breaks his bat, gets a base hit. And there's another broken bat. And they get him. But the broken bat single, they score a pair, and they lead it four to one. But it's out of the way. And since 1987, Shingo Takatsu didn't have any minor league innings. Chris Sale had only 10 and a third. Jack McDowell, 27 and two thirds. Sergio Santos with 28 and two thirds before 
Carlos Rodon tonight at 34 and a third minor league innings. And then there's Alex Fernandez. Oh, it didn't go the way he wanted. We had a few guys come up and talk to him, welcoming him to the big leagues. It will get better, and he will get the ball over the plate. All right, boys, let's just go to work. Scott Atchison, new pitcher for the try. Adams one for two, had a beautiful bunt single back in the third inning. Carrasco was awfully good tonight. Five innings, four hits, and a run. He didn't walk anybody, which was a concern coming back from that line drive in the face. And he fanned 10. So Atchison, the first man out of the shoot, usually a pretty busy man. This time on for the sixth time, and he has yet to give up an earned run. One out. Hey, Sox fans, all season long, you can score with Papa John's Pizza. The day after the Sox score five or more runs, you get 50% off your entire online order at papajohns.com with the promo code SOX5 at participating Papa John's locations. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Here's Cabrera. He's 0 for 2, a strikeout, and hit him to a 4 6 3 double play. Back through the middle in the center field. Hatches and played on the Red Sox and the manager. Terry Francona. So he obviously liked what he did for him there and brought him over to the Sox with him. Ball gets away, so Cabrera in the second. Perez tried to backhand that one. That's pretty tough to do. It is a wild pitch. Sox had a double play situation. Can't backhand it, then can't locate it. And Milky in its second. One account. Four, five, and zero oh for them. One, five, and zero oh for us. Edison's been around since 1999. Just about all over this country. So he's paid his dues. He has indeed. 40 year old right handed. 2 2 pitch. Bullpen up and going. McAllister, the right hander, Zipchinski, the left hander. Two down. Good hard slider. And Terry Francona. Looks like he wants to make a pitching chain. It's probably going to be Mark Zipchinski against Adam LaRoche. So the night is done for Scott Atchison. 
And as Zepchinski trots in from the bullpen, we'll step out and be back after these messages. of U.S. Cellular Field and delicious food and beverage options for you to enjoy prior and during White Sox games. Purchase a First Merit Bank Stadium Club membership by calling 312-674-1000. And our Honda call to the pen is Oak Lawn's Mark Zepchinski. Left-hander coming on to face Adam LaRoche. On for the seventh time. If you're in that pen for Terry Francona, you're going to get a lot of appearances. Adam is 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground out to Short, who was in the shift. Can't get the breaking ball. And the count nothing in one. Zuczynski has not given up a hit to a left hander this year. He is the ultimate specialist. Six appearances and a grand total of two innings. Nice block or stop, I should say, by Perez. Good mobility to his left. Perez able to get to that one and keep it from going to the screen and keep Melky off third base. You're just tuning in. We scored first. Home run by Abreu in the first inning. They tied it up. Home run by Santana in the second. They took the lead last inning. Home run by Murphy. In a broken bat, two run single by Graber. It is 4 1 Indians. Last year, Zipchinski allowed only 11 of 57 inherited runners to score. That's less than 20%, and that is pretty good. So he gets him, and we're into the seventh, trailing by three.
Weed Street. Now the fun starts at 5 with on location editions of Sports Talk Live and Bulls pregame live. And then stay for a huge night on CSN, including game three in Milwaukee and game four in Nashville. It's a 4 1 Cleveland lead here in the top of the seventh inning. Perez, Ramirez, and back to the top of the order with Bourne. Perez 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. <laughs> Takes ball one. Roberto hit 305 in AAA last year in Columbus for coming in the big leagues. Now he played in 29 games with the Indians, but he did manage to hit 271, which isn't too bad for the guy they figured would be the backup catcher, Dion Gomes. I don't know why his strike zone shrunk up now. It's a big pitch he missed on Moss. As compared to the way he's been calling him all night. So three and one to count. Tardy and a full count. That one not high enough for Jose to be able to get under it. We're down the second pitcher born in the 90s to pitch for the Sox. The first, the unlikely Leury Garcia. Ball four. Lead off walk. And here comes Ramirez, who twice has popped up for Alexei. Could very well be that he's going to be asked to lay one down and move Perez along in a scoring position. Gets chased out of there. Carlos is having some problems with the strike zone. No signs of a bunt. Be on the grass right at the cut of the grass at third outfield. Fairly deep. Except for Avi, who's in just a step or so. And the count goes to 2 0. Oh. Adrenaline's a beautiful thing. Sometimes it has to be smoothed out. Two and one.
<laughs> Four, five, and zero oh for the tribe. One, five, and zero oh for our socks. Full count. This pitch is up and out of the strike zone. The appeal to Dan Bellino when he said he did not swing. Here's a leadoff hitter, Michael Bourne, who's popped a short, fly to center, and grounded out to a Brayu. Now we might see a bunt. As he takes the ball. And here comes Coop once again. Nobody up in the pen, so this is just. Another talk to calm him down. He didn't have any control problems in the minor league, so this is just over amped, as they talk about on occasion. Robin looking over the lineup along with his bench coach, Mark Parent, and third base coach, Joe McEwen. Ryan Rayburn and shooting for Murphy. There's a bunch of good one. Sacrifice five free. Provide your guests with the ultimate all inclusive White Sox experience in the home plate club or Magellan, Magellan Scout seats. These two premium seating areas are the best way to entertain your most important clients. Employees, friends, or family. For more information, call 312-674-1000 or visit whitesocks.com slash premium seating. Gibness takes it up high. And field in. Fastball, if you're just turning in, going from 94 to 98. And a big pitch right there. Misses, goes Kipnis way, and it's two and one. Deep in the left field. Way back. Well, if he gets back there, makes the catch. So Perez is going to tag and score, and it's a 5 1 ball game. RBI number four for Kipnis. Just missed taking it out of the ballpark. 
Elke made a nice play, got the throw in. But not before Perez was able to score. So here's Michael Brandley. He had a little infield single that came back and hurt us last inning. Two walks, sacrifice bunt, sacrifice fly. And that's back through the middle. That's going to score another run, and it's a 6 1 ball game. Fourth run batted in by Brantley. And the sacrifice pushed two men into scoring position. They both scored as this fastball right down the middle, taken right back up the middle. Santana, a homer, a walk, and a deep drive to right field. That's a good sign. It's the first slider that Carlos has gotten over the plate. Three and one. Payoff pitch. A little soft looper. Hikers there, but they come up with a pair. Seventh inning stretch. They lead it six to one.
1230 on Comcast Sportsnet. All right, boys, we need to do some work here, some woodwork. We trail it six to one. First ball, honey. One pitch, one out. Ivy now, 0 for 3. You can just imagine what's going through the young man's mind, fighting his control. Certainly fighting his emotions, and it's going to get a whole lot better for him, but right now he can't think about that. All he's thinking about is what happened here tonight. <laughs> this can be a precious moment in his life, and it is a precious moment, even though the expectation factor was there, the adrenaline factor was there. I know one thing. He's got a ton of talent. Woo. And he's going to forever wow. remember the walk to Moss. And the base hit to Rayburn. Regardless of what happens the rest of his career, you always remember the first couple guys you face, good or bad. But many years down the road, with a whole lot of success that he's going to have, it'll be distant, but it'll still be a memory. Gillespie's gone. Two down. He's now over three. A couple of strikeouts and a fly out to left. Get Sox Social. Stay connected to your White Sox and favorite players all season long by visiting whitesox.com slash connect today. So a pitching change here in the bottom of the seventh and we'll be back. Been used in and out of the bullpen by the tribe. On for the fourth time is ERA 579. 19 hits in nine and a third innings. With the right handers hitting a whopping 538 against him, he was in the rotation, and then Danny Santana was brought back from the minor leagues. McAllister now will toil out of the bullpen. He's a gigantic right hander at 6'6, 240. Alexei is one for two, a double. That coming in the second inning. Hey, Cooper, all over the place tonight. Oh, I won the count. I know you guys. 
Mark Burley, the winner, is trying to beat Baltimore 13 to 6. Burley Meister just keeps rolling. Early now, three and zero already on this season. There's a hanger. He hit it hard, but foul. Here's our Xfinity High Speed Action replay, and it came in the second as Alexi gets a high fastball. One of the few mistakes that Carrasco made. Able to run and challenge Bourne. And he beats him at second. And win by Burley, number 202. He's got a team now that's going to score him a whole lot of runs. The Toronto offense, although they've had some pitching difficulties, nothing wrong with that offense. A 51 footer. Broken bat. And a one, two, three inning. We're into the eighth, trailing by five. Games it was a little tough out of the bullpen with an ERA of 771. The last eight, the ERA at one and a quarter. So things getting a whole lot better. Look at the strikeouts to walks 28 to 6. Our lows never stop improving staff. We're into the top of the eighth inning. Six runs on just six hits for them. One run on five hits for us at one run. First inning homer by Jose Abreu is fourth of the year. First pitch strike. Also for two, a couple strikeouts and a walk.
Two and one to count. Boss was first man that Kellos Rodin faced. And he walked him. Payoff pitch. It's softly broken bat and sounded like. So it'll be a 5 3 if you're scoring along with us. Let's be playing out there in short right field. And here's Rayburn making his second. Oh, well, Flowers went out there to make sure that everybody got back in their normal position after that radical shift. Raven had that broken bat flare into left field for a two run single. Two balls, two strikes. Good pitching matchup tomorrow afternoon. So make your plans to be with us. Jeff Smarja against Corey Kluber in the finale of this three game series. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it'll be the Kansas City Royals coming to town to conclude this homestand. That ball hit high and deep in the right center field. Way back there. Look like a hit on top of the fence. Rayburn is going to pull up at second base with his second hit in his two at bats. And Terry Francona wants to have a word with Lance Barksdale. He thinks this is out of the park. Gets up in the wind and keeps on drifting. And Ryan Rayburn will be in the Hall of Fame. Will be facing the Sox every day. There he thinks that that's a home run and Adam goes up. It hits the top of the wall and bounds back into the field of play. From that angle looks like a double. Terry's going to say it bounced off. Either the seats or the railing after it hit the top of the wall, but it didn't appear to from that replay. So they have a meeting of the minds out there by the mound. You see, hit the corner right here, just above Adam's glove. Never hit the railing and never hit the back wall. It just bounced straight up and bounced back. So here's Chisholm Hall. He's 0 for 3. Two and over the count.
that he was at two. Throws him a slider. Gets in the middle of the plate. But he gets it by him. Something else he will always remember. Here's Roberto Perez. 0 for 2. Couple strikeouts. A walk. And a run scored. Softly hit. And that'll retire the side. Nothing across. There was a hit. Where is one left to go to the bottom of the eighth? Trailing 6 1. By Miller Lite and Carlos Rodon's first major league strikeout. Uh, Our Snyder's got that that souvenir that will be nestled on his mantle someday. But right here. We need some runs. Tyler Flowers at the plate. He's 0 for 2. Big Zach McAllister. Pitch foul back. He was originally signed and drafted by the Yankees. Yankees like his size, like his fastball. Chosen in the third round in 2006 for finding his way to the Indians. Yankees historically have really liked guys, pitchers from 6'5, 6'6. The irony of that is that most of their productive pitchers have been anywhere from 5'11 to 6'2 and 6'3. Ben 
Red Sox used to do that with hitters. They used to love to get those guys 6'4, 6'5. <laughs> they were really good at 6 o'clock. Phillies used to draft the biggest right handers and bring them to the major leagues. They'd be 6'7 and 6'8. They break down a whole lot. Well, back in those days, that was a different. Six, seven, and six, eight. And the guys today, six, seven, yeah. and six, eight. Different animal. But a lot of times you'll find that the bigger guys don't use their legs near as much as the guys who are smaller. And if you don't use your legs when you pitch, you're going to put a lot of strain on your arm, and you probably are not going to last as long. Tyler's saying, well, why don't you give my guy some of those pitches? One out. This one had a part of the plate. Yeah, but, but I think Tyler felt that he squeezed little Don. Squeezed the youngster on a, a couple of pitches that he might have given him but didn't. That big back big of bat to Moss. Yeah. One had on him struck out and inside missed part it. of the plate. Micah's one for two. Michael let off that third with a base hit. He had something going there. Yeah, is that a meat? Watch out. One and two the count. Is Adam Eaton laid down a beautiful bunt? So we had table setters aboard and then couldn't do anything with it. <laughs> Ramirez. Two down. Time now for AT&T Multiview. And it is the aforementioned bunt. A perfect bunt. Right down the third base line and no play at all for Chisenhall. And it looked pretty rosy at that point. But Melky grounded into an easy two. And out of the inning. As Abreu went down on strikes. So Adam went for three. Two center field is going to get down for the base hit. Let's pick up a couple right here. Horn does a pretty good job realizing that he can't get this sinking line drive. I'm not sure how he was able to stop it from going by him, but it's a good sign that Adam is starting to hit the baseball. It's two for four tonight. Including that butt drops this one in front of Bourne, who is able somehow on the long hop to keep it from going by him. Melky, that strikeout, that 4 6 3 double play, and then he chopped a single right back through the middle. Pitchers have yet to walk. The White Sox hitter. That to go with the 12 strikeouts. Tribe pitchers continue to strike out a bunch of the opposition. Two and one. I've been wondering if there is any. Eighth and ninth inning magic tonight. Yeah. 
Where are you on deck? Six runs on just seven hits for them. No errors. One run on six hits. For us, also no errors. And that's back in center field for a base hit. Here comes Abreu. He's one for three at Homer. Back in the first inning. Well, the table setters are starting to heat it up. Both Eaton and Cabrera. Two for four tonight. The base hit. That on the score. Melky will hold at second. And it's a 6 2 ball game. And here comes Adam. One swing of the bat, and we're right back in it. Second run driven into the night and ninth of the year for Jose. He gets a little cutter on the outside part of the plate, hits it off the end of the bat, and here comes Terry Frank Conner. Undoubtedly. Another call to the pen. So it's a four run game as McAllister departs. We'll step out and be back after these messages. It up. He's on for the seventh time. Six innings, three walks, seven strikeouts, and just four hits. Not one left hander this year has gotten a hit off him, and he's going to face Adam LaRoche with two on and two out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Adam's due. He's 0 for 3 tonight.
Drives it up, takes a strike. Now at 93. Good fastball to hit there it was a fastball on the outer third, just about belt high. But unfortunately, he fouled it straight back. This was a very hittable pitch. Too much time. Right here, Adam. The one, two. Now feel slightly to the left. Full count with Javi on deck. Payoff pitch. Big rip by Adam just underneath it. It's a little higher than Adam would have liked, but he's able to stay alive on the high heat, falling it straight back. Again, slowly it up to better. Throw to first base, back controlled by Santana. So that'll load him up and bring the tie run to the plate. Looked like Ramirez rushed his throw. He had some time as Adam doesn't run all that well. So this is going to take Hagedon out of the game. Takes it back up the middle. There is a shift. And he's got some time, but he rushed his throw. Santana cannot dig it out of the dirt. The bases are loaded. The tying run comes to the plate. Hagedon leads. And Terry Francona will call on his sixth Indians pitcher. That ball was in the club ever so briefly. As it trickles out, we'll trickle out and be back after these messages.
Shaw appearing in his eighth game this year. Appeared in 80 of them last year to lead the major leagues in that department. ZRA 491, eight hits in three and two thirds innings. Could very well be that he's having some problems with the cutter that he uses. 538 right handers have hit against him, and he'll be facing a right hander representing the tying run. Here's Avi. Avi is due. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Better outside, way outside. One and over the count. Here they going out. One and one to count. When they had a piece of the plate. Made a mistake there and got away with it up in the eyes of Javi. A ball and two strikes. Cabrera third, Abreu at second, LaRoche at first. High in the right field. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. It won't. And he did not make the play. Ball trickled out of the glove. He had a shot at it. And Moss got tangled up with the railing. And the ball drifted away, so Abby's got another life. He's got a shot. And he just misses the catch. Has to balance himself. Comes away unscathed, but without the baseball. So a huge break right there. And the count hangs a one and two. Two strikes. Gillespie on deck. Bobby's had a very good run with the bases loaded, a 500 on base percentage, 357 batting average. Got him. And we're into the ninth, trailing 6 2.
number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay previews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. And Zach Duke comes into the ball game. And here's Jose Ramirez. Corners in close outfield. Well, for the most part, straight up is there's first pitch strike from the veteran southpaw. Six runs on seven hits, one error for them. Two runs, eight hits, no errors for us. Zach on for the sixth time. ERA a little above four. One one pitch. And once again, a reminder tomorrow, make your plans to be with us here at the ballpark. Just a Marja against Corey Kluber. Can't make it. That game will be right here on Comcast Sports. Lexi's got him. One out. Michael Bourne, 0 for 3 with a sacrifice bunt. Very short out there in left field. Outfield really spread out. As there's the strike, and the count evens at one. For our guys in the bottom of the ninth Gillespie, Ramirez, Flowers, scheduled hitters. Two and one. Jake Patrichka, who was back active and throwing in the pen. Count evens at two. And it's full. Take some other finals for you. Red Sox shut out Tampa Bay one to nothing down in St. Pete. Nets beat the Braves seven to one in New York. As he walks him, so good speed aboard for the Mets. That's nine games in a row they've won. Mets are sitting at eleven and three, and we mentioned Toronto and Mark Burley. Mark Burley three and zero oh in the season. As he beats Baltimore 13 to 6. 10 innings, Washington beats St. Louis 2 to 1. Phillies at home beat Miami 7 to 3. Miami 3 and 11 to start off the season. For the second time this year, Baltimore pitcher threw behind Bautista of Toronto. And the second time after he got thrown behind, Hit a ball out of the ballpark in that at bat. So tempers flaring north of the border. And tempers flaring Midwest as well. Tempers flaring all over the place in baseball. Yeah, there's been, uh, there's been some heated ball games already in this very early season. Cubs came back to beat the Pirates 9 to 8 at PNC. Giants are four and ten on the season. They lead the Dodgers two nothing. Bottom of the third at AT and T. They get him picked off if he can get it there. Time, he gone. Good throw by a break. So Bourne going on first move, just nailed. Jose took his time. Bourne does what he has to do, trying to get in the way of the throw, but. Gets here in time to get it. Good solid throw. And this time, no debate on the tag. 
So one and one to count to Kittness. Other action, Angels leading Oakland 3-0. That's in the bottom of the second at the Big A. Texas at Phoenix against the D-backs tied at one, bottom of the fifth. Rockies at home hosting San Diego. Rockies leading 5-3, top of the eighth inning. Kansas City has defeated. They came back to beat Minnesota 6-5. Yes, he did. And that'll retire the set. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. We need four to tie. One more time. I'll try pitcher, not including the starter Carrasco, who went five. Then it was Atchison, Zipchinski, McAllister, Agadon, Shaw, and now Cody Allen, who had a tough time last time out. Said he wanted to tighten up his curveball, keep his fastball down. It's a good thing for Terry Francona to bring him right back to a situation that's not a save situation. Try to get him his confidence back because he is the closer of this team and the tribe is going to need him if they're going to make any kind of a run this year. So Gillespie will lead it off. He's over three a fly out to left and a couple of strikeouts. Start us off right here, Connor. It up did not go. Says Quinn Walcott. Quinn Good game last night behind the plate. Thirteen strikeouts for Indian pitchers. One and two. Six, seven, and one for the tribe. Two, eight, and no oh for our Sox here in game two of this three game set.
Two and two. There were 14,000 plus at the ball game tonight. A very chilly night at the ballpark. Not quite that many around these days. Full count. Don't help him out. Call for base hit right. Just got a piece of it. There's still two guys down in that Indian pen, Anthony Swarzak, TJ House. Let's get them in here. A few have vacated the pen. Seven pitchers, six pensmen in this one so far. And once again, the payoff pitch. High and that's going to be a souvenir left side. Not a real good play, but you would expect that the hands a little chilly at this point of the evening. After the carom, the young man has a souvenir. Once again, the three two. And that is one hopper. That time takes it, makes it, and that's one out. Pretty good play by Kipnis going to his left. Here's Alexei. He's one for three, a double. Way back when in the second inning. Takes a breaking ball stand. That is a much tighter breaking ball than Allen threw last night. He said that was something he wanted to work on, and here he is back at it again. Like that one tweaked his back on a cool evening as he reached out, tried to hit that breaking ball low and away. He's still taking some time as he's still feeling the effects of this. Came up and got him. Right on the number 10. He's a tough customer. <laughs> he just he's out there every day regardless. Count is one and two. Last night, that except exception comeback trailing three nothing bottom of the ninth, one out, nobody on. We scored four. First time we had done that since April 6th of 05 against these Indians. Came to the ballpark today expecting that Mr. Expectations gets you. You gotta be able to. Got him. He knew it. Two down. Here's Tyler. 
temper those expectations. Tyler, 0 for 3. He's has, I'll tell you what, he's been having some good at bats. Had a good one last night after facing a great curveball on the outside corner. Allen made a mistake and Tyler made him pay, drove it through the left side, and that turned out to be one of the big hits of the inning. Of course, when you're that far down and you come that far back, they're all big hits. That's not a strike. And the count one and one. Though with two out, being down four runs, bottom of the ninth, that's a strike. He's thrown four pitches out of the strike zone, and Tyler's going, you know what? Couldn't buy a strike for Rodon. No. And now everything's a strike. Eric is Eric's all over the place. Always is. You don't know what you're gonna. Is a hitter, you don't know. And this ball game is over, so we can't do anything at 14 strikeouts tonight by our guys against Cleveland pitching as they even up the series of the game of peace they won at 6 to 2 and uh, no I they really did not pitch that bad at all. No not much you can do with this one tonight. The Indians came out they played pretty well. I thought that Hector threw well and we saw Carlos Rodon making his major league debut. It will get better for the young man. All right our player of the game is Ryan Rayburn that broken bat two run single. Our player of the game. So for my partner Steve Stone, our director Jim Angie, our producer John Walker, and our associate producer Chris Kamka, also our technical manager Mark Harper, and for the mayor, Mean Joe Brew, Mike Mayor, Frank Leone. Frank DeMotto, this is the Hawk. So long, everybody. Coming up next, Super Post Game Live. You've been watching White Sox Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet.